Now we're ready. Okay. Well, uh, a few years back, I, uh, I, uh, in the house that we lived at the time, we didn't have uh, any drainage in the backyard. Uh, no drainage, and so uh, when we, I knew we were going to be having a good amount of rain. I thought, well, this year I need to put some drains in the backyard. Uh, so uh, I was going to take that on myself. I figured I could handle it. Uh, and, uh, and, and so I got the trench, you know, for, for, the, for the pipe and, and spaced out where I wanted the drains to be. But, but of course, you know, it doesn't drain if you don't have a pit, right? It's got to it's flow downward to the front yard. Stay with me, I. I knew that. I knew that. I know you guys are thinking, oh, I've seen the disaster for me. Uh, that's not the story. I'm telling So, I'm, I'm, I'm a little disturbed with your lack of confidence in me. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, so, to make sure that the water would flow to the front yard like it's supposed to, um, I, you know, had it all set, and then I poured water in the drain at one end, and, uh, and then went out to uh, the front, and I made a startling discovery, okay? Now, stay with me, because this is really profound. What you put in at one end is what comes out at the other end. Isn't that fascinating? You might say, well, duh, right? I mean, if, you're, if you put something in the end of one pipe, and it, and it flows down, and that's what's going to come out at the other end, right? I mean, isn't that like, of course, how it's going to be? And yet, it's not so much of a doubt when we talk about that in our lives, is it? That what you put into your life is what you're going to get out of your life. Yeah. But it's not so much of a doubt when we talk about our lives. Our lives are like that. The things that you put into your life during the year determines when you look back at your year or your life over the past year, it's what's going what's to come out. It's what's going to happen. It's going to determine where you are or where you end up at the end of the year. And this is the time where we do that. You know, we're just starting a new year. We begin to reflect back. We begin to think about how 2015 went. We begin to think about how 2016 is going to be. But guess what? The things that you put into your life over the last year determine where you ended up at the end of the year in your life. The Bible calls this the principle of reaping and sowing. And you know what? It's true in so many areas of our lives. I saw this interview. I thought it was going to be true. It's true in the area of football. Watch, watch uh, this Richard Sherman from the Seahawks. Listen to what he has to say. Win, you don't put in. That's a good motto. That could be a good motto for 2016 for a lot of us. It's true in so many areas of our life, and you know what? It is also very true for us in our spiritual lives. It's very true for us in our spiritual lives. Now, with that in mind, take a look back, consider your 2015. Think about, um, you know, your, your year. What, what did you end up with in your life? What was it? Was it a good year for you? Or it's like, man, I, I really wish I would have ended up in a better place. I really wish I would have some different things in my life. Or here's the thing, good or bad, the reality is you get a fresh start. Now, this is more of a, more of a state of mind because really is your life any different December or January 1st or December 31st? But when we have this men- mentality that fresh year, it's a fresh start. You get a fresh start, and you know what you do? You get a fresh start. You can make 2016 a great year. In fact, I want to tell you that you can make 2016 
the very best year of your life yet. So how can you know that? How can you make that happen? Is it really up to you? Because let's be honest, some bad things could come your way in 2016 that, that, that really you have no control over. But for you, it could be a health issue. It could be a financial issue. It could be a job issue. Maybe your kids are going to make some bad choices that are going to resonate throughout your whole family. Maybe a relational issue that, that, that is not your choice. Or, or maybe the death of a friend or a loved one. I mean, those, those bad things can really happen. I mean, do you really have control over what kind of year 2016 is going to be for you? I believe you do. I believe you do. Because if you will pour the right things into your life, even in the face of hardship, even in the face of trials, even in the face of some of these things that, that, that I just mentioned, you can have a great year filled with spiritual growth in your life. In fact, I would say sometimes because of those things in your life, if you will pour the right things into your life, some of those, those, those tough things, those hardships, could actually help bring about some incredible spiritual life and spiritual growth in your life so that you will look back next year at this time and say, wow, look at what God did in my life for the 2016. I grew more in 2016 spiritually than in any year of my life. You can make that happen. You can pour the right things into your life this year. I want to take a look at a passage. It's one of my favorite sections of Scripture. And I want to look at some things we can pull out that help make this happen for us in 2016. So turn to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. We're going to read uh, starting in verse 10. It says this, That I may know him, which means Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this, or already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think in this way, and if any one of you thinks otherwise, God will reveal that to you also. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me and keeping your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you, and now I tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they, they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies to be like His glorious body by the power that enables Him even to subject all things to Himself. Therefore, chapter 4, therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. There's some incredible things in that passage. Uh, I just I love it because I think it's a great challenge for us in our lives to grow spiritually, to press on, to take hold, to move forward. To and, and, and I want to just point out a few things. I think if we will if we will grab a hold of here at the very beginning of this year and, and we would follow these principles in our lives, 2016 could be the best year ever. The first is this: you need to decide where you could be spiritually. Decide where you could be spiritually. And then he says there, he says there in verse 12, uh, he's talking about, you know, that, that he hasn't yet taken hold of this. I'm, I'm not already made perfect, but I press on. I press on towards the goal. You need to decide where you could be spiritually. In other words, you need to set some goals. We need to set some goals for ourselves. I mean, the old saying is true. If you shoot at nothing, you're sure to hit it. You shoot at nothing, you're sure to hit it. We set all kinds of other goals in our life, right? We set financial goals, we set career goals, we set educational goals, we set personal goals. We made, you know, at this time of year we call them resolutions, right? We set New Year's resolutions. And how many of you guys made a New Year's resolution? Wow, not very many. How many of 
Did you already have your so far? Oh, okay. Good. So a lot of times they last a few weeks, but I'm not even talking, I'm not talking about making resolutions. I'm talking about making some determinations in your life. Making some decisions that this is, I'm going to have this in my life. I am determined, I've decided that, that I need to make these changes. Set some goals for yourself. We rarely think about setting spiritual goals. We think about it in all kinds of other areas of our life, but we need to set spiritual goals. Paul's saying here, he, he hasn't reached where he wants to go yet. He hasn't reached it yet, but he's saying, I'm pressing on towards the goal. I'm pressing on towards my goal. His goal is found in verse 10. Look again at what it says in verse 10. This is his goal. He says, I want to know him. I want to know Christ. Is what he's saying. I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I want to share in his sufferings. I want to become like him in his death so that by some possible means I might share also in the resurrection. That's an awesome goal. I want to, I want to know Christ more and I want to follow him. I want to be like him. That's his goal. And he hasn't attained it yet. He said, I haven't reached it yet, but you know what? I'm going to press on. I'm going to press on. Now, pressing on, uh, it involves a couple of things. It appears in that passage. The first thing pressing on involves, it involves forgetting what is behind. You've got to forget what's behind. Now, what's behind? Well, there's lots of things that are behind, but first of all, there, there's some bad things that can be behind it. Some bad decisions, some, 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 uh, uh, you know, some choices that you've made, some sin that's got a hold of you and you involved in that. You've got to forget what's behind. You can't get bogged down by your guilt. You need to realize if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, there's bad things behind you that forget it. They're forgiven. Leave it behind. Don't dwell on your failures. You might have made a lot of mistakes. You might have made some effort to, maybe, maybe you just go, man, I, I, I tried to read through the Bible last year, and then I made it like two weeks, and then I just gave up. But I wanted, I wanted to try to, you know, do this more in my life, and I just, I failed. I wanted to get rid of this sin in my life, and I just keep messing up. You've got to leave that behind. If you want to strain towards the goal, if you want to press on towards the goal, you've got to leave that behind. But you know what else you've got to leave behind? You also to leave some good things behind. What I mean by that is you can't rest on your past laurels. Well, you know what? I've already done a lot of service at the church, so this year I don't really need to serve because I've already done that. I've already been involved. I've already led someone to Christ. I've already done, I've already read through the Bible. I, I, I pray I pray already enough. Or, you know, you just, all the, your past laurels, all the things that you've accomplished before, guess what? you got to leave that behind too. Because God said, hey, I've got something more for you. I've got something new. I've got a next step for you in your life. Don't think, well, because you've done all these great things in the past, I still don't want you to press on towards some new great things or some more great things or more of some of the same great things. You can't rest, you can't rest on your past moral spiritually if you want to reach the goal. If you want to press on. So it involves leaving some things behind, but also he says, um, you know, I need to strain towards what is ahead. So I leave behind, uh, I, I leave behind what, what's behind me, but I strain towards what is ahead. I forget what's behind, and I strain towards what ahead. That, that, that phrase about straining towards what ahead is like a, it's like a sprinter who strains at the very end, you know, where when they're almost to the finish line, they do that last little strain towards the end so that they can cross that finish line. He's saying, that's what, I, that's what I need to do to press on. What lies ahead for Paul is his purpose. I'm straining towards that goal. I'm straining towards that purpose. Look at verse 12 again. Look what he says. He says, not that I've already obtained this. So he hasn't attained the goal. He hasn't attained where he wants to be in the spiritual life. He hasn't got to where he wants to grow to. Or I haven't already been made perfect, or that word perfect means mature. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. And so what he's saying there is that, that, that I want to continue to seek Christ's purpose in my life. And I'm not there yet. And guess what? None of us are there yet either. None, 
help us to reach the goal of maturity in Christ, being perfectly like Christ. And so we all have room to grow, and so we need to set new goals, and we need to press on towards that, and we need to figure out what Christ's purpose is for us. I need to figure out this year, 2016, what's your purpose for me? What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to be about? What do you want me to be involved in? What do you want me to contribute to? What do you want me to give to? How can I serve you? I gotta figure out what lies ahead of me. It's training towards it. That's not a passive thing. Well, I'll just kind of cruise through life spiritually and see if something good happens to me, you know? This involves some intentionality. This involves some effort. This involves some strain. This is strain towards what's ahead. That means we don't just go after it casually. What is Jesus' purpose for you? Think about what could be going on in your life if you pursue Christ's purpose for you wholeheartedly, with all your effort, with everything you've got. And I'll tell you what, if we want to grow spiritually, we need to press on to where you could be. Think about where you could be spiritually. We need to press on towards that. Think about the goals you could set for yourself. What if you said, man, this year, I really want to reach someone to Christ. Maybe you've never done that in your life. If you just say, I, 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 want, to, I want to lead one of my friends to Christ. And I'm going to tell you, once you do that, you need to realize that there's few things in life that are more incredible than that. How can lead someone out of darkness and death to life to Christ? Maybe that's one of your goals. Or maybe this is the year we say, I'm going to join a life group, or I'm going to begin tithing, or we're going to begin to pray on my knees every day, or you know, I'm going to begin to get into a word, and, and you just begin to set some goals for yourself. I'm going to, I'm going to really, I'm going to really let God come and help me with my anger issue, or um, help me overcome this addiction, or whatever it might be. To set some goals spiritually for yourself, and, and pursue them, and for, to, to get what's behind and strain towards what's ahead. What's this purpose for you? Make it a goal and go after it. Second thing we see in there, if you want to grow spiritually, you want to make 2016 your best year yet. He says there that we need to live up to where, not, not, only, not only do we need to think about where we could be spiritually, we need to live up to where we should be spiritually. Not only do we sometimes fail to go after where we could be, we oftentimes don't even live up to where we should be. Look at what he says in verse 15 and 16 again. He says, let those of us who are mature think this way. And I love it. And if any of you disagree or you think otherwise, God's going to show you that you're wrong. He's going to show you what I'm saying is right. Uh, <laughs> it's awesome. And then verse 16, though, only let us hold true to what we have already attained. In other words, let us live up to where we already should be, what we've already attained, where, 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 our, where our maturity level should already be as a believer. We need to live up to that. We need to be true to that. Let us hold true to what we've already achieved. Where should someone be spiritually that uh, doesn't know the Lord as long as you have? Six months. Where should you be? One year. Five years. Twenty years. Thirty years. Where should someone be spiritually in their relationship with God and know the, with the Lord and walk with the Lord as long as you have? Are you living up to that? Are you living up to that? And you evaluate how you're doing. Consider if you're still struggling with all of the same things that you were two, three, four, five years ago, it begs the question, how bad do you really want to grow? How bad do you really want to know Jesus? And how much do you really want to be like Christ? Because if you want to grow spiritually, then it's time to start living up to where you should be. No more excuses. No more cruise control. Start living up to where you should be spiritually. Making decisions like someone who's known the Lord as long as you have. So we start living up to where we should be. And then the third thing is this we need to realize who influences us in the wrong direction. Who is it in our life that influences us in the wrong direction? Look at verse 17 again. It says, Brothers, Join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross. For in this destruction, their God is their belly. They glory in their shame, and their minds are not earthly things. Their minds are not earthly things. We 
let people who are not even believers in Christ influence the way we live our lives. Decisions we make. There are many people in your life that, that, that you want so badly to impress or to be like or to win the approval of and, and, and so that we, we don't live the way we should because we care way too much about what they think. For we, we allow them we allow them to influence the decisions we make. We allow other people to influence how we live our lives. For many people, this thing is true. We buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't even know. <laughs> Who are you living to please? Who are you living your life to please? How much of you think that you don't get a lot of really kind of funny ones that really go up. Except last night, I don't know if you saw last night. But, uh, but, but Bud Wilkinson, he was a football coach at University of Oklahoma, and, and his teams were undoubtedly the strongest in the nation in the late 50s uh, and into the early 60s. Consistently, they would just, they, they would just, they would go undefeated and they would steamroll uh, the other team. Well, after his retirement, he went up to the broadcast booth, and, and Coach Wilkinson was asked the secret to his success. How can he consistently mold these young athletes into, into powerful teams year after year after year? Here was his answer. He said, when a football player goes into the game, he can play to a variety of audiences. He may play for the crowd in the stands, for example, working hard for their peers and trying to avoid their boos. Or he may play for a special person in the stands, a girlfriend maybe. A player may allow the other team to dictate his play. In other words, if the man across the line isn't very good, then he doesn't play well either. If the opponent cheats he play and plays dirty, so does he. Some players allow their teammates to determine the quality of their play. Some focus on the game officials and the referees. And of course, some merely play for themselves. They work hard just to be the star. Many, many audiences buy for the attention of the players. My men know, however, that there is only one person watching the game that matters. Only one person whom they have to please, and that's me. Regardless of the tears or the booze, the strength of the opposition, the fairness of the officials, or the play of the other teammates, I am the only audience that counts. When everyone knows that and plays that way, they pull together, do their best, give it their all, and they win. If we want to grow spiritually, we need to realize that there are people around us that will influence us in the wrong direction. And we need to do something about that. We need to realize that we play for an audience of one. We live our lives to please and to impress only one person, and that's our Heavenly Father. Because His opinion is only one that matters. It's pleasing Him that is our goal. Realize that there's people around us that influence us in the wrong direction. The last thing is this that, that if we want to make 2016 the best year yet, we need to stand firm with those who also want to grow spiritually. Stand firm with those who want to grow spiritually. Look at, look at verse 20. Well, verse 17 says, Brothers, join in imitating me. Keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. So as we're, as we're going through life, we need to pick out people and be like, yeah, that person is living to please Christ. I'm going to try to keep my eyes on them. Paul even said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Come look at verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body by the power and able to be able to subject all things to Himself. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love, Long for my joy, my crown. Stand firm, thus, in the Lord, my beloved. He's saying, "Hey, we need to stand here. We need to come together. We need to 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 band together as the body of Christ, as other believers, and stand firm together. That's how we're going to be more successful. Is when we stand firm together. We, we that's that's why God gave us the church because He knew we were going to be more successful living out this Christian life. In fact." I would say you can only be successful living out of your Christian life in the community of believers. Because too much of what it says in the Bible involves relationship with other believers. It's never intended to live on your own. We need to find a Christ. I want to show you a, a 
video of uh, it, it's a it, it's a it's a standoff between uh, it, it, I'm standing getting a, a lion and, uh, and, and some water buffalo, and I want you to see what happens. This is how it is. If you think we're disturbed by an animal that is attacking somebody who wants to look away. Like. I mean, no, it's not gory or anything, but check this out. This is, this is pretty awesome. At the end, and I think that's the one they got to capture. So, what now? But you know what? That right there is why being a part of the church is so important. It's together, together. We get, we get the encouragement, the accountability, the strength, and the protection from the enemy that we need. The Bible even says that our enemy is like a roaring lion, prowling around. When you're out there by yourself, you can see what happens. But then all of a sudden, here comes a community of believers, and when we stand together, when we stand firm together, we can be successful in finding out what we want to If you want to grow spiritually, if you want to grow spiritually the way that you can and the way God wants you to, decide to commit yourself to the fellowship of believers. So, 2016 to be the best year ever. Decide where you could be spiritually. Live up to where you should be spiritually. Realize who influences you the wrong way and begin to live for an audience of one and stand firm with the body of believers. And you know what? Yes, there's going to be some, for some of us, some ups and downs, some tough things we've got to go through. But next year at this time, you're going to look back at 2016 and you're going to just say, wow, look at what God has done. Look at how I grew spiritually. Look at where, look at where he's come from. Father, 
Father God, we, we thank you. We thank you for being so big. Incredible love. Thank you, Son Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins so that victory for us is possible. And Lord, this new year we want to live in victory. No longer in defeat, no longer in discouragement, no longer in, in depression and, and, and feeling down. But Lord, we want to rise above our circumstances, rise above the things that this world throws at us, and we want to live in the victory that you've given us in Christ Jesus. For each of us in this room can realize that that is possible if we will pour the right things into our life this year. The Lord, nothing's going to change from 2015. Nothing's going to be different at the end of this next year if we don't make some changes. And I pray you help each of us right now decide what needs to be different, what needs to change, what do I need to put into my life and pour into my life this year so at the end, the same great things that you show up in my life. Lead me to what I really want to do. So, Lord, I pray you'd help us even this morning to set some spiritual goals for ourselves for this year. Lord, I pray we'd be honest about where we're at spiritually, even if we're living up to where we should be. You know, for a lot of us, we're looking and saying, man, you know, I really should be Make an excuse and make some changes in their lives. Lord, I pray for those who have people in their life that are influencing them the wrong way, Lord, they would do something about that. They begin to live a big dream. Would you alone? Not let others dictate the decisions they're going to make or how they're going to respond or how they're going to live their life. But Lord, would you complete the This to be a very best year yet. And so I pray for each of us, we would decide to stand for what other believers who want that same thing. So we commit ourselves to the body of believers. We fellowship, we worship together. We fellowship together to be um, more challenging and to be in relationship that. Where we can give and get encouragement and accountability. Lord, we love you. Lord, we commit this year to you. To refresh our commitment, renew our commitment to you this very moment. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we're going to stand, we're going to sing. You know what? It's